Ladybird, you're gonna have to stay out of the way for this video. Today, we're gonna talk about Valisneria. That's this plant that's going gangbusters in this tank. We've also got it in the 800 gallon, and it's one of my absolute favorite plants, and this is the plant that I tell people to buy. If you can only afford one plant, buy Valisneria. Makes it very easy for the fish to breed. You can see there's lots of babies in here, and it spreads via runners. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's gonna grow a plant. You can see it right here. It's gonna grow a plant, and then it's gonna bounce, and then it's gonna bounce, and then it's gonna bounce, and then it's gonna bounce. And you can see some right here. We're actually gonna move the light. And we can see that happening right here. So here is a nice grouping of runners. And it's just gonna keep making new plants. Let me get a better, let me get a better light on this. Put it down here maybe. There we go. So it's gonna keep growing. So these roots and a plant connected by a shoot. And if you wanted to, let's say I wanted to plant it in a different aquarium, the connector, you just sever it. So now I've got this standalone plant. You could sell that, right? And you could just keep doing that or you can go and you can take this whole string right over here and you could try and plant, well not try, you would plant this whole thing in your aquarium and it would kind of get held down better. If you had fish that like to dig, that's a better way. Now, let me pull this. You can, I've had luck with trimming up here. So a lot of people ask, can you trim Valisneria? Because it gets like four feet long, right? It's way taller than my aquarium. I've been lucky and I've been able to trim. Sometimes you get a little bit like some of the back pieces that I trimmed a long time ago. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of yellowing and, and stuff like that, but it comes back. The trick with, with Val is it takes a while to establish. So you might plant it in your aquarium and it might not do anything for two months. And you're going, this plant is dumb. Cory is dumb. But then once it gets going, you got some root tabs in there. You got some easy green fertilizer going. You got fish poop in the gravel. And I much prefer it to be in gravel, by the way, as opposed to a sand like this. And here's the difference. Quick little sidebar. In a sand tank, you see how all the fish poop sits on top? That's not optimal for the plants. When you come over here and you look in the gravel, it sinks down, down in the gravel. You can see the roots in the gravel right there. And you can see the mold. So it helps deliver the nutrients straight to the Valisneria. Now, you might not like this jungle look. There's ways you can do it. You just trim it, remove it, create a path. I'm actually gonna put a big rock in here to create a nice feeding section, but let's hop over to the 800 gallon and take a look over there. So here's the 800 gallon. We're gonna go in up close. You'll see ladybird, my boo boo puffer, and you're gonna see algae. We're just coming in on summer. And what happens every year to me is I've found now that I have this house, is this skylight wreaks havoc on this aquarium for about a month and a half with all the new sunlight that it's not used to. But this aquarium, if you can look past the algae, you will see Valisneria doing its thing. And that's what I want to show you today. So Ladybird, you're gonna have to stay out of the way for this video. But as you can see throughout the back here, we've got lots of Val, some goes all the way to the top. This tank is 40 inches deep. But as you can look around, it spreads itself. You see all of this? We kind of planted it just in the back there and all of these runners. So if you look, it just bounce, 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 and it's trying to bounce again there. And if we come and look over here, bounced, 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 bounced. And same over here. And you can see like those two never hit ground, but this one will right there. And so it's my job to come in here and maybe remove some of this. If we don't want this area, which I kind of don't because this is Ladybird's feeding area, I don't want that to be filled with Val. And then maybe not in front of this crypt we have right here, right? This pink flamingo crypt. So I might come in and take all this out and plant it into a new aquarium or feed it to turtles or whatever I'm going to do. Same thing over here. You've got some... I put rocks in. I talked about putting rocks in the other aquarium. And uh, you can see here that 
it tried to bounce the rock, couldn't, and it made more plants even though it couldn't root. And it did the same thing up here. So those are all things I can clean up. And again, when it hit the wall, hit the wall over here, and we've got lots of runners, babies. Got a little horse face loach chilling back here. But again, it even runs all the way around. So this is why it's one of my favorite plants. If you can only buy one or you just really want a jungle look and it to fill in an aquarium, it can do that. So we're gonna go back to the other tank. We'll talk a little bit more about care. The good news about Valisteria is one of the easier plants. It takes a while to get established. It'll work in 6.8 pH all the way to 8.5 pH. Lots of different hardnesses, super hard water versus not hard water. It basically wants good light and it wants nutrients. Easy green root tabs. We're using the easy LED right here and it's not at max. It's, uh, you know, two or three clicks down from the top. The thing to know is as the plants kind of cover, like I removed the auto feeder for this video, but I usually have an auto feeder here, auto feeding, it'll catch food and stuff like that. So I'm probably gonna get in here and trim and just trim it back because I want at least this corner, if not the front, I kind of like it to, you know, escape backwards. And when I do that, there's gonna be a little bit of dieback, a little bit of yellowing leaves and, and that, but because it grows so fast, once it's established, it's really not a problem. And uh, you know, you get to see there's lots of fish in here, so I wanna see them more. You can, you can uh, kinda control the growth a little bit if you wanna put your light towards the back. Now your fish won't look as good, cause, but the plants up front won't grow as much. So light placement matters, how long, how tall these plants are gonna get matters. And just as a quick comparison, because I really love this plant, but if you look over here, this is Dwarf Sagittaria. And I've got some goldfish on duckweed patrol, but it's a lot skinnier as you might see, and it gets a little bit longer, but when it's well established, if we go way down here, this is also dwarf Sagittaria, and it's like a miniature version of Val, where it's going to, again, create runners, and eventually it would fill in this nice carpet. Well, that eventually is probably another six to eight months, so We've definitely got some time to go on that, but Valisneria, great plant. You get yourself one, it'll pay dividends in your entire fish room, and you'll get to the point where I am, where it's like, oh geez, I gotta plant some of this somewhere, I gotta thin it out. But I would much rather have the thing where I thin it out. And I started it with, if we look back here, a long time ago, I started it with um, the Aquarium Co-op Easy Planter. I don't know if I can even get to see it through there. Yeah, you can see it way back there, and eventually it just hops out and, uh, you know, makes new plants. You can also just plant it straight in the gravel, which that's the faster way to get it to produce. In fact, it's a little easier to control if you put it in the planters. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to give this a quick trim, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done trimming. All right, I finished my quick three-minute trim, and there will be some dieback, some yellowing of the leaves, but it's always come back gangbusters for me. So I trimmed this much plant mass out, which is quite a bit, honestly. Like this is some serious, you know, some serious vegetable spaghetti going on here. There's lots of, you know, stuff that was over a foot long that got cut out. You know, I'm not finding it easily for you, but you know, the stuff that was towards the back came towards the front and I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, a nice clean feeding area for the auto feeder. And you can see now the fish, you can see them much better now like with anything, you're gonna go, that trimming looks terrible. Well, yes, it's going to grow back. It takes, if you're, you know, if you're ever doing anything like this, you trim it, it'll look terrible. And then over the next week, all the new starts and everything start growing and it looks natural again. So the day you trim, it looks a little weird and it's gotta grow in and, you know, everything starts going forward from that point. But you can see the fish a lot better. You still got the stuff coming from the back that's nice and long. You know, so I didn't trim at all. I just trimmed enough so I get to see my fish. And really what we're gonna do with Valisneria here is I'm gonna put a tile or a rock or something to create this natural path of feeding and everything anyway. The Valisneria will fill in. This is probably six or eight months worth of growth. But once I put the easy LED light on, that's when it, like in the next month, it really unfolded because I was using 
poor lighting before. But uh, the thing to know is it's going to get more and more and more and more dense. Great for breeding fish, great for shrimp, great for, you know, kind of cleaning your tank and just looking good. You don't have to do a lot. You just let this thing go wild and you just have to worry about it growing too much and taking out that and putting your compost heap you know, maybe once a month or something. And now you can really start with the light getting down and you start seeing like, wow, there's actually a lot of babies down in there. Cause now, and that's part of what happens with Valisneri because it shades itself, right? All the big leaves. Now that we've cleared this out, all of this is actually gonna grow even faster because it goes, hey, I'm getting way more light than I did yesterday. So Valisneri, easy to grow. Temperatures, I've got, it can go very cool. I've had it in the 65s, you know, maybe even a little less all the way to about 80, 82 or so. So this is a plant that's kind of like, do you have an aquarium? Do you have a good light? Are you gonna fertilize it? It will grow, it will fill in. And it's kind of the, I used to call it the one plant wonder. It will make an aquarium by itself look amazing. So Valisneria, highly recommended. And uh, if you haven't played with it yet, get yourself at least one pot of it and play with it. Thanks for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We picked another one that we thought you might like. You can click on it right here.